Hey everyone, welcome back to Chicken Cindy's, and this will be phase two of the Huffy Scout. Let's do it. There are going to be two parts to this video. The first part is going to be removing this actual three by system, the front derailleur, and adding all this stuff. We're gonna be changing this to a one by. The second part, is gonna be for if you're wanting to turn this into a dirt jumper like I'm going to be, where I'm gonna change the back into a single speed. So, the first part's gonna be the one by, the second part's gonna be the single speed. So let's get into the actual one by part and see how that works. All right, so first thing is gonna go over what I got. So, oops, what's that? For the chain ring up front, I went with a 32 tooth blue one. That should be nice. I have some pedals. These are very cheap nylon pedals for about $20 off of Amazon. All the links to this stuff will be in the description as well if it's something you're interested in. So, uh, I just, I'm trying to go really budget with this. It seems a lot of people either have the money to buy a high end bike or they don't at all. So, this will be my first time ever messing with these crank sets. I've seen a bunch of people do the one by conversions with the IXF crank sets. They are extremely cheap, hollow, style, bottom bracket, one bys for a crank set. So you can see this is the new bottom bracket. So we're gonna have to take out the old one. Uh, so this part definitely feels like plastic. Bearings feel very very good they're very smooth so that's nice got spacers for whatever kind of drive frame you have here is one of the crank arms this would be the non-drive side little blemish right there but for sixty dollars i mean what do i expect you know this is going to be the mounting hardware for that chain ring as well and it looks like there's a dust cap cover right there so that's nice Plastic. I think that's all that's going to be in this box. And this will be the drive side arm. So, not too bad. A little bit of a wear there as well. So, not too crazy. We're going to start with putting this thing on. Uh, from the look of it, this one doesn't matter which one goes on which side for the chain ring. So, I'm going to do the side with the numbers instead of the... I'll do the JG bike. It's like JG Wentworth. 877 cash now, but then you're going to put this sided bolt So this side it looks like it has like a flathead adapter And then the actual screw on the other one Typically you can get it down pretty far just by hand Some people use just like a flathead kind of on the edge to tighten here. I have the actual tool uh, This one is a park tool and it says CNW2 Okay, when you have all four of these bolts on, you are done with this part for now. So let's put our attention to the actual Huffy and get that old three by off. To get this derailleur hanger off, we are going to have to break this chain. This is the chain breaker I have. Since this chain has absolutely no master link at all, just pick one of the links and you will just twist this to pop the pin out and what that will do is allow me to take this chain off the pin should be out now which is just like looks like this that's the pin and unfortunately this pin is no longer good now that we have this chain broken you should be able to just remove it all right now what we can do is remove this entire front derailleur once you start to get this screw loosened this bad boy should come right off all right now that that part's done we can concentrate on getting the cranks off so this should just be a dust cover that should just come right off the bolt on this side is a 14 millimeter on the drive side the drive side should be Lefty loosey, righty tidy. I've already broken it loose. It might take a little bit of a 
a little bit of oomph to get it off, but it shouldn't be too awful much to get it off. All right, now that we have this 14 millimeter bolt out, we can use the crank arm removal tool. I have a park tool, CCP22, and I'm going to remove this pedal. And the easiest way for me to remember which way to move, remove the pedals is whenever they're at the bottom like this, no matter which side you're on, it'll go towards the front wheel. So it'll go this way. And the reason why I'm removing this pedal is to give myself more room with the crank arm removal tool. Because sometimes when I'm spinning it to break the crank free, the pedal will get in the way. So for the removal tool, this top part will just screw into the actual crank arm. And now you'll take this and tighten it down and it'll get to the point where it starts pushing the crank arm away from the actual square taper bottom bracket. It shouldn't take much and it'll come right off just like that. And you can see that part right there goes through that square part and pushes through on this. All right, so I got both the crank arms off and I flipped the bike upside down. So you're going to have this weird looking ring on the actual non drive side. What I used to loosen mine up with was I stuck a flat head right in that corner and one of those arches and then just tapped it out. And then that should be able to come off real easily. That's kind of like a lock ring to get this loosened. There are these two parts that stick out and I was able to use just my adjustable wrench. And if you have it facing this side like I do, and upside down, it will be lefty loosey. Okay. So, got this side off. For the drive side, when it's upside down, it'll spin this way. I used this adjustable wrench to break it loose, but all you have is this little bit to grab. So it might be better to use a different tool. That one was pretty hard to get off. It took quite a bit of force, but I got it off, so that's good. So now we can put the new bottom bracket in. All right, now that we have that old bottom bracket out, we can put in the new bottom bracket from the actual IXF set. So always, always grease your bottom bracket stuff. Oh, it's so important. And this will have on there. So L for left side. R for right side, and the arrow is the way you have to tighten it. So this is the right side, should tighten this way. And a very big thing about this is, it should be very, very easy to screw in. Almost no resistance until you get to the end of the travel. And you can see this one is gonna have to go this way on the left side. So the new bottom bracket is entirely installed. Again, this tool will be linked in the description, but this is actually a foundation bottom bracket tool. This one fits that style. Now we get to actually put in the new crank set. So again, grease is your friend. So I'm gonna grease this entire axle part. I did have to use a little oomph to get this in, but this side is in, it spins really, really good. So now we'll do the other crank arm. Put a little grease on these spindles. I put a little inside here too, but that's just gonna be for the plastic dust cap, so that one's not too terribly crazy. You align the crank arm, so it's, you actually can see there's a thicker line on the top and the bottom. That's where this portion will go, the portion with the slit in it. There we go. For these two pinch bolts, I would just try to do them a little at a time. Now you'll just take your plastic dust cover this is the tool to tighten it, and this is just plastic. So, just take it, then you'll screw it in there. And again, you can cross thread that, so be careful. But it is just plastic, so on a positive note, if you cross thread this, the only thing you'll ruin is the plastic little bolt there. And just get that finger tight, and if you're wanting to keep this like a mountain bike and not turn it into a dirt jumper, just match the length of this chain to your old chain, put it on, and then you're basically good to go for a new one by setup. 
There is something I would recommend you to get though, and that's a chain guide, and that's because the rear uh, the rear derailleur does not have a clutch. So insert picture here. That is what I recommend you to buy. Uh, it should hook right here. It'll clamp around this tube, and that'll help keep the chain from bouncing off the actual chain ring. So I do recommend you to buy one of those. The rest of this video now is going to be taking the cassette off of this rear wheel and turning it into an actual single speed for the dirt jumper. So if you're wanting that part, let's get into it now. To start with, this is a five mil bolt and you can start to take off this derailleur. You now have no rear derailleur. All right, now that we have this cable cut and that rear derailleur off, we can remove the front twist shifter and we can start to take this rear cassette off. This is actually a freewheel styled cassette. Some people do not realize that. So this is the tool that I have to use or that you will have to use as well, which this is the number. It's a FR2 and it's a freewheel removal. But as you can see, I took off that washer and that bolt and this will go right into there and it goes all the way through to the middle of the cassette basically righty tidy there we go lefty loosey and you'll just remove the entire thing and once that's off you can free your dork disc look at that bye bye okay same thing as i said in the last video though some people like kickstands some people like dork discs feel free to keep yours on if you'd like but that is how you remove the actual freewheel cassette. So now let's put on the new single speed one. All right, there, there is a specialty tool to get this off and on. I don't have the tool, I did order it, but to tighten it on, as you sprocket it, it'll actually tighten itself the rest of the way. So you can get it on pretty well, pretty tight without the tool. Behind, I have these two spacers. Uh, they're actually bottom bracket spacers. These ones are metal, but they fit perfectly for me. After doing the math of the distance that I would need to get it to where I needed it, this is right at 5.2 millimeters, and I needed about 5.5, and that was to make sure I left enough threading as well for the free hub, or I'm sorry, free wheel, to actually catch onto the thread. So I put some grease on the inside of this. And also when you're putting this on, be careful not to cross thread it. You can see you can actually use this ratchet to tighten it. And as you pedal it, it'll tighten itself as well. So, and also speaking of the one by, so whenever I was putting this on, I had one spacer on the drive side. I actually ended up moving that spacer to the other side so I can get this chain ring closer to help compensate the chain line so and that worked out perfect and there's still plenty of clearance there so that is what i did there and now we'll put the wheel in and get the chain to the correct length and see if we can find that perfect fit without having to use that tensioner fingers crossed all right so the chain breaker is going to get some use again here and also fun fact there is a fancy little piece of metal on that chain breaker tool and what it is for is holding the chain in place to help with sizing. So this is the little part I'm talking about. And it's for doing that to keep the kind of the chain together. So after sizing it, I believe when we go to do it, that one's going to be kind of a tight of a fit, but I think I'll be able to use it for what I'd like to use it for to make it fit. I think, I hope, we're gonna find out. You will have to make sure you break a link that has insides. Well, I can explain it better with this actually broken, okay. So for the way this quick link right here works, you have to break apart with the outside of the chain. So this is where the roller is, and that's the inside, this is the outside. So you gotta make sure you break that part. I've taken part of the chain off of the cog right here 
to help it fit. So I'll just do this. To get this quick link on, I ended up having to tighten in the outside of the bracket in with that, and then I had to push the pin through. So it's not a quick link like I thought it was, so that's my that's my bad. Hehehe. <laughs>